principal of Carbon Law and the creator of ELIRA, the Artificial Intelligent Legal Information Research System. Today I'm talking about um, Sophie, a, another AI who has been granted citizenship of Saudi Arabia. So here I have pictorially represented Sophie as a, as a robot and we're going to talk uh, about what the implications are of this citizenship, what uh, I see some problems with it and also we're going to talk about um, uh, what I think they should, how I think uh, robot citizenship should be dealt with. So first of all, um, I'm going to assume that this is there's an actual citizenship granted and this isn't just a, a mar marketing stunt and so we're going to look at what happens if we create such legal rights uh, in a robot. So um, uh, we like, the, the first problem I see with this is we like to think of uh, robots as being humanoid. So the, the things that humans do most and do best is understand other humans. So the largest part of our brain is devoted to that. And so what that means then is that when we imagine artificial intelligence, the first thing we do is imagine humanoid robots like Sophie. We imagine Terminator, we imagine C-3PO, we imagine Skynet, HAL 9000, all humanoid type robots. Now, um, more realistically, uh, robots aren't humanoid. So even just looking at, at Sophie, uh, she has some, some really cool facial rec facial abilities. She can move her mouth. She's, she's humanoid. She can move around. Like, uh, she's a fantastic like robot, but that robot is kind of like a puppet. So um, she can move around, but then outside of Sophie, there is a, a chatbot server, uh, probably hosted on the cloud. Um, she has some kind of onboard computers. Obviously, there are human creators that amend Sophie from time to time. Um, now, there might be various systems that, that, that change, but what we do know is, is that the part, of the, the part of Sophie that we consider to be the, the AI piece is, you know, she can, she can hold conversations. Uh, now, uh, as someone who develops chatbots, such as Alira, you know, I'm, I'm familiar with this and you know, there, there, are, there is some fantastic technology, but we are still a long way from having a chatbot that is, you know, a human. Um, now we can have, you know, if this, then that statements, hi, hi, how are you? I'm great. You know, um, good's good. Okay. And it's kind of like an, if this, then that. So I get one, one response in and I get another res response out. Now there's some really cool maths that goes into understanding natural language. Um, and you know, we can just, we can see some fantastically developed chatbots, but still a chatbot is not really, you know, it, it doesn't have uh, any kind of consciousness. It's not thinking it's, it's purely a program for interacting. Um, and, and in fact, you know, they're often um, built on deceptions when you ask questions like, what's the sky like today? Um, they can't answer. Uh, or say, what, what do you think it's like? So, so that's, so while they uh, seem to have developed like a really neat uh, chatbot, at the end of the day, that's not, a, that's not a human. Now they've got a really cool onboard computer as well. They're, they're, they're a great robotics firm. Um, now the question though is, who, what have you granted citizenship to? Is it the puppet that is Sophie's, Sophia's body? Is it their onboard computer that controls that? Is it the, the, the chatbot server in the cloud? So now let's just think through the implications of trying to define what you've uh, granted citizenship to. Is there a citizenship being given, like if we replace Sophia's body, does the replacement hold the citizenship? Or is it her? You know, is it the computer that, that controls it, that, that interfaces it? Is, it? is it the cloud? What happens if I take this cloud server and I copy it? Is Which one is the original Sophia? Now, I, I do not have a problem with granting citizenship or legal personhood to something artificial. There is a long precedent in that, and we see this today in companies. So companies uh, have are a, um, an artificial legal personhood. They can own assets, they can derive income, they get taxed. Ultimately, there are you know, shareholders and directors behind them. Ultimately, it comes back to a human somewhere, 
um, but you know, we might have um, uh, a company that owns large amounts of property that lasts for you know, hundreds of years. They, uh, um, they can go bankrupt, they can die. We can answer questions of how we copy the company, but the, re the, what we, the, the thing about the company, it is clearly defined. If there is a corporate register or some kind of other le le legislation, and that and registration on that defines what is the company. Now I can copy a company's constitution, its you know its rules, its programming, as we might say, um, and, but I would have to register that again. So again, coming back to the concept of what we do with a, a, a robot, how could we register a robot as a separate person? Let's let's take citizen. Citizen is a very strong. Um, a strong word, but what happens if you could give a robot a legal personality like a company? So we could give it to the server, in which case you would have to take some kind of program and say this registered program is itself a separate entity and, and it can derive income, it can sue or hold assets or has rights and obligations. Now, and that, but that is very different to the idea of we have a, a humanoid robot that sits in itself and that that person is a citizen. So um, now let's ask, let's have a, a, a complex scenario here. What happens if we have a more industrial robot? See, we've got one, two, three, four arms uh, of industrial robots on a conveyor belt helping. Now these are all controlled by one central server. Now here, what would you give ro robot uh, uh, personhood to for each arm? It could be, here we got four, it could be hundreds, could be thousands. Um, would it make sense to give it to the server, the program? So uh, we like to think of physical things and that's why I think Sophie is so attractive and it's a fantastic story. But uh, what, you know, what we need to come back to is if we were gonna give some kind of legal personality I would suggest it would be to the AI itself. Now, uh, again, it would need to be by some some kind of registration, um, and because otherwise, if we cloned it, I could suddenly create five million different AIs, and you know, imagine if each of them are only earning one dollar, uh, I could suddenly earn millions of dollars uh, and and pay like a tiny amount of tax on a progressive tax rate. So. Uh, there, there, let's go through some other problems um, that arise if you give a robot a uh, legal personhood. So what happens if Sophia um, creates her own Sophia? So Sophia 2. So what happens if she goes out and, and makes an exact replica of herself, um, connects it up to her servers? Is this Sophia 2? Is she a, a, a citizen as well? Does she have legal personhood? Now, um, what happens if I attack Sophia? If I damage her, do I? Is that assault? Um, like, can I marry her? Uh, like, you know. Um, now, these questions can be asked, answered again. If we look at a company, like a company can hold assets, it can sue itself. No, it's it's a it's an artificial entity. Only natural persons can marry each other. Um, so, you know, we can solve these things by looking to comp company law and seeing. Let's treat. Let's create an artificial uh, um, entity. We can register it somehow, and we can take this entity and say this this is a separate legal person. But note that whatever we're doing, we are, we are stamping it on some kind of imaginary thing. Maybe it's the server, maybe we have a registered program, maybe we have something. Uh, and so I think you know, there is quite a good possibility that we will have, uh, and as we get more advanced AI, that we will create a separate legal status for this. Um, but I think we should always like, not get caught up in the hype of, here is a humanoid looking robot, let's grant that citizenship. Um, those are my thoughts for today. Thank you very much for being here. Um, uh, please, uh, if, you if you agree or disagree, please leave a comment. 
Um, I, I look forward to answering them and, uh, and chatting with you soon. Thank <laughs> you.